So it's November and it's surprisingly not crappy outside. Uh, I think we're gonna have a high of 50 today. Uh, they're talking about highs in the 60s. For Minnesota in November, that's spectacular because we're supposed to have highs maybe in the 30s or 40s. Uh, but I know who's uh, really enjoying this warm spell. The girls who happen to be molting. Look at this bald spot in the back of, back of Popeye's head. In fact, all three of them seem to be simultaneously molting, which has never happened before. You might be asking yourself, I thought chickens molted during the warm months. They can, uh, but some chickens just, um, for whatever reason, do it during the winter months. A couple telltale signs other than their naked spots. For one, look at all these feathers here. This is just from a couple days. We've got white feathers. We've got black feathers, more black feathers. So yeah, definitely molting. We also haven't gotten any eggs in a long while from any of them. So we're currently eggless. We're back to buying our eggs from the grocery store, which is just great when you have three chickens. So when chickens are uh, growing new feathers, uh, their body uses a lot more protein to um, push those feathers out. So they temporarily stop laying eggs. Uh, chickens also start to reduce uh, the number of eggs that they lay during the winter months. So that's kind of a, um, a one-two punch here. Do have a video from back in January uh, when pot pie was molting back then as well. Um, it looked like in different areas on her body, um, more like on her underbelly and things this time. Um, and you know what, that's totally fine. You know, chickens have to replace those feathers and uh, they kind of do so in different patches on different areas of their body. All right, so I had to coax them over with some uh, some scratch here. They get really kind of, I don't know, testy when they're molting. Let's see. Can you, can you, yeah, yeah, easy. Max, can you grab, can you grab noodle, please? Okay, let's see. Let's see, oh, you don't really seem to be doing too bad. She does have cross beak. She busted her beak over the summer. It's still growing out, um, but yeah, she's kind of cross beaked right now. Still eating and drinking fine though. You actually might not be molting. I'm pulling on these feathers here and you seem pretty good. Okay, you can sit her down, bud. Pot, see these right here? Move that feather out of the way. These right here, these little spiky things, these are called pin feathers. And if you look really close, you could kind of see the new feathers are starting to push through. These are like tiny little straws and they hold the, the feathers in place and the new ones just kind of push through. Kind of got a little bit on your cheek. Underbelly seems to be doing good this time around, but yeah, she's definitely, see how easy those come out? Yeah, definitely molting. She's not happy about it, aren't you, pretty girl? Oh my gosh, she doesn't really freak out like that. She normally doesn't care to be picked up, but she too is molting and you can tend to tell on the back of her neck. Yeah. She's looking a little bit thinner here. And you know, I honestly, she's never molted before. Uh, so she's overdue. Yeah, yeah. I know. See, a little thin. Where else? Yeah, got the pin feathers uh, right, yeah, I know. <laughs> right there, I know you're not happy about this, are you? You feel a little bit embarrassed? Okay. Back to the neck. Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, see, they really do get emotional when they do this. They uh, really, really don't like to be handled and Parm normally likes it. So what do you do for chickens that start molting during the cold months? Absolutely nothing, sing it again. Uh, there is one thing I do, and uh, I do mix some more protein-laden uh, treats for them. I'll put some more uh, fly larvae in their scratch, and um, that'll give them a little bit more of that extra protein that their bodies need at this moment in time. All right, I got my helper, Max, my seven-year-old son, to show you guys how we mix some uh, protein scratch for the girls. Uh, this is kind of like a uh, scratch corn mix here that we keep in this tin. Uh, it's a great way to... Uh, yeah, and you know what? Let's just hold this right over there in case we spill. A hard thing about this is um, the it tracks rodents, so you really got to be careful about what kind of container you put this in. Metal works, but if you spill any on the floor, I mean, they're just going to track mice. One more scoop there, bro. Next, Max is going to grab uh, two handfuls of these black oil sunflower seeds. All right. It's this uh, dehydrated um, fly larva. It's got a lot of calcium in there, very high protein snack. And Max is gonna put uh, several handfuls of that in there. You ready, buddy? Let's throw another uh, scoop of scratch in that bucket. 
All right, I think that's good enough. Now we gotta put the top on it. All right, let's mix it up. Let's mix it. Make sure that, here we go. Pretty good, all right. All right. Max, they're right there. Oh, they know the white bucket. They know the white bucket. Good job, Max. See, even with that cross beak, she eats just fine, so. The molting process is gonna take probably close to a month from start to finish. And you know what? By the time the snow actually does fall here, they should have their feathers. So they, they're gonna do all right. Um, you know, it's always a good thing to provide supplemental heat in the winter, you know, when it gets cold. But other than that, you know, they don't need to wear like scarves or anything ridiculous. You don't need to bring them inside. They'll work through it. They're farm animals. All right, guys, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. There's always something going on or going wrong at my house. Bye, guys. Then there's this clown. <laughs>